Welcome to Serving Afghan Refugees. This guide is by no means comprehensive. There's a lot to the subject, but we are going to cover as much as we can. Afghanistan or Afghanistan, however you say it. Afghanistan has several different people groups. Most of these consist of several tribes. The Pashtuns comprise the largest group. They are more fundamentalist in their adherence to Sunni Islam. Only a very small portion of Pashtuns are Taliban members. Other significant groups include Hazaras, Tajiks, Uzbeks. We don't recommend that you initially ask which ethnic group they belong to. In some cases, their identity may be tied to their nationality more than their ethnic group. They may want to present a unified Afghanistan to honor their country. So this question may seem strange or uncomfortable to them. You could ask which language they speak at home and that could help narrow it down for you. So which languages are spoken by which groups? Dari and Pashto are the official languages of Afghanistan. Dari is the trade language, a form of Persian, and is spoken by about 78% of Afghans. Pashto is spoken by Pashtuns, but many Pashtuns also speak Dari. Uzbek is spoken by about 10% of Afghans. Both Dari and Pashto both have different dialects. Some of them are regional. What is the religious makeup of Afghans? Afghans are almost exclusively Muslim. A very small underground Christian community comprises less than 0.03% of the population. Among Muslims, there is a Sunni majority, most of the ethnic groups, and a Shia minority, Hazaras and people from Herat, which creates tension between these groups. Do different groups get along? Not always. There is tension between Shia, Hazaras, and Sunni groups, particularly the Pashtun. Most other ethnic groups consider Pashtuns to be more hardcore in their beliefs and zeal towards Islam. Historically, Afghan government leadership has been Pashtun. How are their interactions affected by current events? Currently, the country is divided particularly between the Taliban sympathizers and those opposing the Taliban. Many refugees are not supportive of the new Taliban regime. Should Americans avoid talking to refugees about politics? It's probably unrealistic to avoid political conversations with Afghans, but it's probably unwise to get into conversations about what the US did or didn't do and how the pullout was carried out, etc. How should you behave with the opposite gender? Most male-female interactions are considerably different than, than in the US. Modesty is extremely important. This is primarily maintained by avoiding most non-relative male-female interactions. This means that men and women should not be alone together or seek out conversation with one another or have any kind of physical contact. Women are responsible for maintaining a modest demeanor. Deviating from established standards may be interpreted as seduction or lewdness. This modest demeanor includes not looking at men directly in the eyes and not hugging or other physical contact at any time with men, including when greeting one another. Modesty in clothing for women generally means loose-fitting clothing, which covers as much skin as possible. That would be long sleeves, long dresses. Women, when visiting an Afghan home, should try to dress in a modest fashion without trying to appear Afghan. How should you behave with the opposite gender? If a man has to interact with an Afghan woman, it's best to keep conversation light and polite and to avoid all physical contact. These rules don't apply as much to young children, but begin to become more relevant as they hit puberty. It may be helpful for you to show pictures of your relatives, particularly of your parents, siblings, and children. But as a man, you should not show an Afghan man pictures of your wife. A wife is someone a husband wants to protect. This is largely done by hiding her from other men as much as possible. As Afghans become Christians, or as they become westernized, some may relax these gender norms to varying degrees. You'll need to pay attention and ask lots of critical questions to find out what's appropriate. What other cultural insights are important? Normally, Afghans follow Islamic traditions regarding food. They can consume halal or permissible foods. Ham, sausage, bacon, pork, or lard, any type of pork is forbidden. Drinking alcohol is also not permitted. Fish can be eaten, but not shellfish like crab, lobster, shrimp, oysters, etc. Many processed food in America are not considered halal food. These contain gelatin, emulsifiers, enzymes. Questionable flavors also might be prohibited because they may have ingredients that are not halal. As you collect food for your refugees, make sure it aligns with halal standards. Recommended foods, fresh produce, basmati rice, lentils, canned tomatoes, vegetable oil, dried fruits, and nuts. This may also be important for cosmetics, skin products, vitamins, and pharmaceuticals, since some contain ingredients like 
pork gelatin. What other cultural insights are important? If you invite them to come and eat at your home, they will likely be hesitant. We recommend that you let them know that you are familiar with halal restrictions and ask them if they eat halal food. Note, even if they don't, they'll probably all say yes to present themselves as good Muslims. If so, adjust accordingly by purchasing meat at a halal retailer. Another option is to ask them to bring the meat and you prepare the sides. If they see you following these guidelines, they'll feel more at ease eating with you and will probably visit again. Keep halal restrictions in mind as well if you'd like to take your Afghan friends out to a restaurant. Christian Afghans may or may not follow halal restrictions. What are meals like in an Afghan home? As you arrive in an Afghan home, you should take your shoes off at the door, unless they tell you not to. As a guest, you are looked at as a welcome gift from God to the family, and thus they will try to respect and honor you with their generosity. The family will provide the best, the best they have, and make sure that you eat and drink plenty during your visit. Always receive tea, food, gifts, whatever, with your right hand. The left hand is considered unclean since it is used for unclean tasks, like using the bathroom. The same goes for eating and drinking. Always use your right hand. If you're starting out, maybe you should keep your left hand in your pocket. Meals are not normally done in a dining room setting, but generally a tablecloth will be placed on the floor of the living room and people will sit around it. You may be directed to a specific spot on the floor, as Afghans consider different spots to convey varying degrees of status. And, as a guest, you are a king in their home. The most honorable spot is furthest from the door. Make sure to honor your hosts. One way to do this is to eat and drink what's served to you. If you're given a full plate of food, you'll need to at least almost finish it. This shows the hostess that you've enjoyed the food. If you completely finish the plate of food, your hosts will give you another large serving, even if you ask for just a little. If you are full and you don't want any food, put your hand over your plate when your host tries to serve you more food. The same principle applies to tea. Leave your tea almost gone to show your host or hostess that you enjoyed it. If you finish the tea and don't want more, Cup your right hand over the teacup. Right hand. If you have allergies, it is okay to say that you cannot eat or drink it. And because they value hospitality, they usually will find something else to serve you. As Afghans visit you and your home for a meal, if you have the possibility of making a similar setup on a living room floor, for example, that may make them feel more at ease. Don't feel a need to assign seats, but maybe make sure that if someone from your family needs to sit next to someone from theirs, that they are from the same gender. If you're meeting someone from the opposite gender, put your right hand over your heart and nod as if slightly bowing. If you're a woman greeting another woman or a man greeting another man, there is a three kiss thing that they do, beginning with the left side and alternating. If as a guy you're not comfortable with this, feel free to shake hands or hug the other man. It's important during the greeting to ask lots of questions. How are you doing? How's your family? How's your job? All these things. This is just etiquette, like when we say, how are you, in passing, and doesn't require an answer. As they ask you questions during a greeting, an answer isn't expected. You can ask again during your visit and an answer could be given. Okay, how are new refugees different from those who have been away from Afghanistan for a long time? New refugees have probably just left their home and are very traumatized, uncomfortable as they sort out this new context and they come from an honor-shame culture, so it may be a little bit difficult for them to explain that they're traumatized because that might feel dishonorable. So they may be traumatized and have a sense of honor-shame that doesn't allow them to be very vulnerable. They also might be a little uncomfortable as they sort out this new context. They feel very vulnerable and will be very open to friendly people. More established refugees may not feel as vulnerable and by the same token may not be as open to new relationships. Generally, new refugees will more strictly adhere to Muslim traditions, while more established refugees might be more adapted to local culture. Newer refugees may not know your local language. How should you ask an answer about family members of Afghans still stuck in Afghanistan? Many are not only grieving their own journeys of fleeing their country, but also have relatives and friends who haven't yet made it out, about whom they are very concerned. Don't feel like you have to avoid this topic if they bring it up. Try to be a safe person for them to communicate these emotions to. Asking if they have families or friends back home and hearing their stories is a way of honoring them. Many Afghans are very appreciative when Christians say they are praying for them, for their nations, for their relatives. If you want to take an extra step, which is extremely welcome by mostly all Afghans, offer to pray on the spot with them for their relatives. Feel free to pray in the name of Jesus, knowing that while they don't consider him to be the son of God, they do believe him to be a significant prophet 
and will treat him with respect and high esteem. Be aware that if you pray in the name of Jesus, the Son of God, this may be a point of conflict early in the relationship, which may inhibit you going deeper. What do you recommend if they ask you for help getting someone else out? Empathize with their plight. Be honest and frank about your capacity or lack thereof to help them. Be willing to help those who have already arrived in your context. Feel free to say that you are unable to help people leave Afghanistan. But if they arrive where you are, you will try to help them within your capacity. Be specific as to what that means, so as not to create any misunderstanding or excessive expectations. How soon should you start spiritual conversations? Take your time and focus primarily on developing solid relationships. Even if Afghans are simply passing through your location for a short period, having a positive impression of Christians may open doors for others in their permanent residence to build upon. Being confrontational or pushy about your beliefs will turn them away from you and other Christians. Normally, they will ask you about your beliefs relatively quickly. If they do so, feel free to share what you believe and your testimony, and you can be bold. It is recommended by most people to avoid speaking negatively about Islam, Muhammad, Muslims, the Quran, or anything else related as they may take it as confrontational or a personal attack. How should you respond to spiritual openness? If someone shows signs of being spiritually open, they will be most open in private conversations. They will rarely show openness to Christianity in front of other Muslims. Should you attempt to learn their language? Yes! That's great and very honoring. Even if it's simply a few words, greetings, little phrases, this will be very welcome. The best way to start doing this is while you're talking with them, ask them the names of things. You may get different answers because some speak Dari, some speak Pashto, and they have different dialects as well. How should you respond to gossip conversations? For Afghans, gossip is a main form of entertainment. This, however, leads them to mistrust each other. In many cases, they may ask you not to share things ranging from not keeping halal restrictions to spiritual openness with others in the Afghan community. For you to be considered a safe person in the community, you must take a very intentional stance to avoid participating in any gossip with the community. If someone tries to share gossip with you, it's important to find a response that's not directly shameful to the speaker while communicating that you're not interested in talking about others in the community. What are some good practices about opening up relationships? Be a learner of the culture and a safe place for them to grieve, process, and learn about their new context. Initially, the goal will be to serve them and meet practical needs. As these are met, a very significant remaining need will be for friends. If you have limited time to serve Afghans in your community, we recommend you sponsor or adopt one or two families to go deep with them, visiting frequently, which for them may mean multiple times a week, rather than spread yourself too thin. Is it a good idea to take an Afghan to an American church? Certain aspects of church life may seem shocking to an Afghan, believer or non-believer. Things like men and women sitting together, the way people dress to church, casual, some people not really modest enough in their eyes, or casual treatment of the physical Bible. Muslims will always carry their holy books with great care, sometimes wrapped in cloth or a container. Seeing a Bible placed on the floor, written on or highlighted, worn out, or not treated as delicately as they are accustomed, will lead them to believe we don't hold the Bible in high regard. Other issues like pork or beer at a church, potluck, etc., may make welcoming Afghans into a community church a little complex. If culturally adjusting to accommodate Afghans for your church is complicated, we recommend inviting Afghans into small groups or private discovery Bible studies. And I recommend Bible Bible studies, not the videos. Actually open your Bible and study it with them. They'll love it. If you're interested in specific Afghan evangelistic resources, I have a couple of ones I can recommend. I hope this guide was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. You can send an email to heydanberry at gmail.com. If you would like to help sponsor a family, send me an email. I would love to connect you with an Afghan family and let you support them as they resettle in the US.